Hey guys, it's Amelia Singer here, and for this week's High Street Hedonism, where I bring you the best of the high street, we're going to be focusing on contemplative wines. Did I pronounce that right? Contemplative. Reflective. It's Remembrance Sunday, and of course it's Remembrance Day for some countries on Thursday. So I wanted to choose wines which might have many layers to them, which might make you think, which might be a bit off piece, a bit interesting. Um, yeah, and we're just a bit different, um, and we've all, I'm sure, got a lot to contemplate um, over the last couple of years, especially. Um, so to kickstart, I wanted to have some bubbles, um, just because I think bubbles are a great way to start. I also have enjoyed these bubbles for a long time. They're Waitrose's Champagne Blonde Noir range. Now, this has been a staple part of Waitrose's sparkling wine range and champagne range. Blanc de Noir being 100% Pinot Noir. Why is that important? Well, most champagne, it's made up of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. When it's 100% Pinot Noir, it tends to be that little bit more intense, complex, layered, and brooding, which is perfect for this week's topic. Um, so what would one expect on the nose? Well, this has been aged for two years on uh, the lees, the lees meaning the dead yeast cells. So what does that mean? Well, that means that you're going to get added texture, added colour. There's a lovely golden colour here. But also this wonderful, bready, brioche pastry-like, toasted, salted, almond, delicious richness um, too on the nose. But what I love about this champagne is that there's also plenty of fruit already exuding from the glass. Lots of like golden apple fruit, which is wonderful. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's fantastic because you've got this rich fruit layer kind of uh, cozied up with this wonderful brioche pastry tossed with some salted almonds. It's got a long finish and the bubbles themselves are kind of soft but very creamy and moorish. And um, yes, yeah, so there's lots to appreciate here if you want to kind of have a glass and pontificate. Or you could just quite simply enjoy a glass and um, it's just really fruity and rich and something different and also amazing value because often Blanc de Noir tends to be the most expensive in a Champagne Houses range and yet this is £23 and yet during the period of the 1st of December to the 1st of January it's only going to be £17.99. I can't believe it. And with Brexit too, I really can't believe it. But we're not going to talk politics here. That will really send us down the whoop. You know, this is meant to be reflective as opposed to depressive wine. So um, this is wonderful. It's rich. It's creamy. It's great value. Mm. Like this would be a fantastic strong start to your reflective wines. Um, now the next wine is something totally different, but very Amelia. Um, it is an Austrian wine. Most of you guys will know that I'm part Austrian. I love myself a good Gruner, but the Austrians are very capable of making amazing other white grapes. And this is a wonderful expression of three of them. It's a white blend of Chardonnay, Pinot Blanc, and Pinot Gris made by Loimer. Now, Frank Loimer has won Winemaker of the Year uh, a few times, uh, but first of all, in 2002, he's known all over the world, Michelin star restaurants, as well as top wine independence. Um, I've been long acquainted with his wines, but I must admit this was the first time I tried this white blend, which is available at Majestic. And it is a bit off piece, but actually um, with these different grapes, you have, of course, different offerings. It's a bit like an orchestra and they all offer something different to the melody. So Chardonnay, you're going to get the body. It also takes to oak quite well. And this has had a little bit of oak aging for the Chardonnay. Pinot Blanc gives it this lovely kind of plush, juicy texture and uh, also some lovely kind of fruit as well. And the Pinot Gris is mainly added for perfume and those will have been put into concrete. So you get this wonderful blend of very different personalities and therefore you get quite a quirky wine with a lot of stuff going on and which is a bit off piste but is really fun. Um, so yeah, on the nose, I'm already getting like a little bit of a butteriness coming through from the oak. I'm getting some lovely apricot, I'm getting some peach, I'm getting some lovely fresh herbs as well, like kind of sweet basil kind of herbs, so, so kind of sweet fresh herbal element going on. Um, so yeah, not grassy herbs. Um, and then on the taste, mm. so I had a bit of age on it, 2018. Um, 
so yeah, like these wines, sorry, these grapes have, yeah, become very harmonious bedfellows. So you have this wonderful texture going on, you know, I'm a big texture fan. So again, this is succulent ripeness. Uh, this is juicy, this is vibrant acidity combined with ripe fruit. And then there's like really interesting, as I say, this like kind of sweet Thai basil twist. And immediately I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, I could go down so many different trains of thought with this wine. And even in terms of food, you could either go down the actually there's so much going on, let's pair this with something very elegant and simple, like a sole or a white fish and butter, because actually the wine would do all the, the kind of work. Or you could be like, actually, I want to put on an Iranian meze because, you know, this is going to be the acidity and concentration to go with lamb koftas, but there's also kind of pomegranate seeds and floral things going on and spices like cinnamon and cacao and something of this wine, which has so much texture and fruit and fresh herbaceous sweetness. It's a really interesting mix. And um, it could, yeah, what real, or you could just go with the principle, whatever grows together, goes together and choose a really lovely um, kind of uh, goats or sheep's cheese, a kind of mountain wine um, to go for this like kind of freshness in this wine, but also a lot of character too, which would it would like infuse the creamy goat's cheese with. So um, this is called Manheart by Loima. It's £16.99 from Majestic. And yeah, I was actually, this was a really fun, quirky wine. As I say, you could easily just contemplate over it and go down all kinds of rabbit holes or you could just drink it and bring out a cheese plate or you know an Iranian meze as as one does as one easily whips up you know um so that is that one I was very happy to see that on the majestic range well done and then last but not least a red wine an Italian red from Marks and Spencer's from their found range now some of you guys my diehard fans love you um, we'll remember that in the summer, I actually featured on my Denied Destinations, where I talked about Greek wine, I featured on the found range one white blend and one red from this uh, range. And now I'm actually going to be uh, focusing on the Norello Cappuccio grape, which MS really wanted to spotlight and put on their found range. They wanted to show they rediscover this amazing grape. Norello Cappuccio, not to be confused with cappuccino, uh, tends to be a Sicilian varietal. Uh, cappuccio meaning hood. Why? It's because the grape tends to normally be protected by leaves from the sunshine in order to retain its lovely bright acidity, but also really lovely ripe fruit. But you kind of want to keep a balance, right? Because Sicily gets a lot of sun. So sometimes you're like, oh gosh, is it going to be protected enough? And I must admit, I was like, okay, let's just, let's just see where this is going. And on the nose, immediately I was getting these wonderful deep mulled plums, dark cherry fruit um, with a little bit of spice. And then on the palate, mm, 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 mm. yeah, you get the, the mulled plums, the mulled like kind of dark cherries. It's almost like a coolie, but not a coolie because then you get this like very energetic, bright acidity being zapped into the mix. And so it's very like revivifying. And then there's a kind of slight grip of the tannin too. So you get this bittersweet thing, which I tend, I love in Italian reds, you know, like kind of high acid, definitely notice of like a flirtation with tannins, but then some ripened fruit. And again, like if we're going down um, remembrance, reflection, they can often be bittersweet. And um, what I like about this wine is it holds both, but not too tightly. Um, and yeah, for seven quid, I actually think it's probably one of the best value wines out there on the market at the moment. So this is from Marks and Spencer's, the found range, Norello Cappuccio uh, is the grape. And yeah, it's just wonderful perfume and juicy succulents and Sicilian sunshine with a little bit of pain from the acid. You know, bittersweet, what can I say? Um, so I hope that has given you some wine for thought, um, thinking of you all during this very reflective week. And yeah, wearing, raising a glass to all of you guys and let me know what you think. Cheers. Mm.